Sticking with Spurs, Arnaut Danjuma is on his way on loan from Villarreal. Jules, does this move the needle for Conte? My dream, Gab, is that Conte plays Kulusevski, Danjuma, Richarlison, Kane and Son all together. Find a way, I don't care. And Perisic. And Perisic if you want to. Um, sorry Spurs fans, it's not going to happen as much as we would love it to happen. So, it's another body, yeah, it's another option going forward. Does it mean maybe we see a little bit less of Holman Son, who's maybe, been having a nightmare? Maybe, as All we right. said, he hasn't been good. But when everybody is fit, that means there will be at least two of those, well, one of those fives for sure, probably two of those fives unhappy on the bench as well. Well, then Juma can be unhappy all he likes. He's only on loan, right? So. I know, but you don't. Yeah, but you don't. You still don't sign him and pay all his wages to like keep well, him. Those massive happy. wages of Villarreal. No, no, he probably makes less massive. than it Jeff Spence. It doesn't matter. But why would you sign him if you don't want to play him? You don't, you don't sign you him need to play insurance. ten minutes. I don't know. I think he doesn't he's want to really bring good, on Brian Hill. He's a really good player. He's a really good player, yeah, but yeah. Brian Hill played because nobody else was exactly. fit. Exactly. So let's see what Conte does. Weston McKinney has an agreement in principle with Leeds United. How close are Juventus to selling? Um. I think Juventus are, are ready to let him go. It's not because, you know, McKinney has done has done better. Obviously, he had a difficult time at the start of the year. He also had injuries and whatever else. But now, all of a sudden, um, they've discovered younger players in uh, in, in Miretti uh, and, and, of course, uh, Nicola Fagioli. And they say, all right, and they need money coming in after the yeah. losses they made. And they say, all right, you know, we can get him in. Now, I'm told Juve wants 35 million euros. Leeds haven't quite gone that high i think it's a great opportunity for mckinney not just because tyler adams is yeah. there and and there's other american players and an american coach which is how people look at it but simply because i think the premier league suits him yeah i thought he was on to something i think he could have contributed to juventus more than than he had a chance to contribute and some of it is is down to him but turn the page play in a different league with a manager who knows you why not yeah. i i think it's a good move all around yeah i agree Arsenal and Borussia Dortmund are reportedly locked in a struggle to sign Valladolid right back Ivan Fresneda. Yeah. Jules, he's 18 years old. He has started just eight more Liga games than you have. Yeah. I have to say, I saw this dude, maybe it's because Valladolid aren't very good. I saw, I watched two entire Valladolid games, and in one he was okay, and in the other one he wasn't good, although Valladolid weren't good. Um... Are we getting a little bit carried away? What do they see? No, I don't think so. I think he's got big potential. And again, he's 18. So he's similar with Malogusto, uh, who's 19. Who's, who we're going to get to him. We're going to get to him. But in the sense that, you know, those young players, I think there's the potential and maybe, maybe some underlying stat that you look at and, and what you see with the eye, of course. But you can see, I think there's, there's, there's great potential there for him to, be, to become very good. Right now, is, is, he, would, is he better than White or Tomiyasu? Is he ready to play against Rashford? No, I, of course not. Look, I, I don't think there's any, as you know, as I like to repeat from what my, my wise private equity friend says, like, uh, there's no bad assets. They're just badly priced assets. So if you can get... So if 30 you can million get a, euros is his release clause. 30 million. You don't pay Three 30 zero. million. No, but I think costs. right now they're talking around the 15 million mark, 1.5. 15 million, if you really like him, if you think he's going to become a starter for you, yeah, of course. Um, then you consider it and then you try to persuade him. But I don't know. I just think people seem to, to enjoy throwing these I mon don't know. This money around. And, and these There's guys not many good right backs, you know, out there, especially young. And look at Hakimi. You know, Real Madrid never, play, never played him. In the end, you move and you go on loan or you sign for a low fee first and then you become... An asset that is right. worth 40, 50 million. I don't if he know, becomes a Kimi, sure. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> More teenage right backs. Woo! Chelsea are aggressively pursuing Leon's Malo Gusto. I'm going to avoid making bad taste jokes. Uh, Jules, he's 19. And he's had 18 months as a starter. There's more of a record here. Yeah, 47 games he played for Lille. Uh, for Lyon, sorry. 47 games. He played in Europe. He played in the league. He showed some really, really good things. Some more difficulties defensively, especially in positioning and, and awareness, let's put it that way. Um, so let's see, right now Chelsea are making, they've made an offer of 20 million euros last night, uh, 17 plus 3 million I'm being told. It's nowhere near what Lyon wants. He's got 18 months left on his contract, they want closer to 40. Can you meet in the middle at 30 like plus 40 bonus? million for somebody with 18 months left on his yeah. contract who's 19 years old? Yeah, but who's got great potential and a lot of clubs are looking at? Right. Who's on the verge of the French national team? So he's not, you know, you talk about Fresneda at 30, I say, okay, Gusto is, different, is, is the, level, the level higher up. 
to Fresneda, for example. I'm assuming he would be coming as insurance for maybe long-term replacement for the aging Reese James, who's all of, what, 22 years old? Yeah. Right, just but then, so I, I, this is what I put out. I said he wants to go to Chelsea because he's already agreed personal terms, six and a half year deal. Yeah. The money is bigger than. Is he wise for his career for Malo Gusto at 19 to go to Chelsea now? And people have said, yeah, but Rich James is, is injured all the time. He only plays like 50% of the games every season. Which means he's going to be injured all the time forever? No, no, true, okay. which is a good point. Because I'm a bit worried that is that a good move for Gusto? Well, could, could that mean moving? Move, no, back. Remember how bold he's going to build that massive network of clubs. So he's somewhere else on loan yeah, if it doesn't know. work out. I, but I don't know. he's a great player and he wants to go to Chelsea. Chelsea want him. I don't know if it will happen. They might run out, run out of time. But he's a great talent. Why not Arsenal sign him since Arsenal's so keen on, on accumulating right backs? You pre I think they prefer Fresno. I think he's on the radar. Right, I think he's on okay. the radar of a lot of teams. But maybe, yeah, maybe the price tag is putting some clubs off. I don't know. Nicolo Zaniolo's future at Roma remains uncertain, Gabby. But if he does move, Jose Mourinho has reportedly been offered Hakim Ziyech. Is that a good solution to replace him? So before I get to Ziyech, I wanted to point out that... Um, the Daniel has been linked with Milan. There's also uh, an offer from Bournemouth, apparently, on the table. Um, I suppose we're interesting, but surely not after Danjuma now. You can't go and get Zaniolo, right? No, that, that wouldn't yeah. make any sense. I mean, part of the thing is clubs are saying, yeah, we'll take him on loan. Roma are saying, uh-uh. You're either going to buy him out right now so we can book the money. Yeah. Because remember, I had chickens come home to roost. Remember, yeah. I told you all the spending, all the spending you did. Yeah. Um, or you take him on loan with an obligation to buy, which is essentially the same thing, right? Uh, or like an obligation to buy. I think the Bournemouth one might be like, you know, we take him on loan and then if we avoid relegation, so yeah, that's then... Um, so he's got decisions to make. Uh, as for Hakim Ziyech, the issue is the same one. And, and people always underestimate. The, remember the long contracts? They're like, yeah. oh, look, isn't Todd Bowley brilliant? The long contracts, it can work out brilliantly or it can also hurt you. Because the problem with Hakim Ziyech is... Dude's not going to take a pay cut. Okay. The wages right? are huge, yeah. He's got enough years left on his contract. He doesn't need to yeah. do that. And so you end up, essentially, you still carry his amortization on your books if you send him on loan. You still have to subsidize his wages like you're doing with Lukaku. Like, you're not really solving the issue. He's pushing 30. Nobody's going to buy him unless he gets, you know, uh, uh, unless he gets like a big chunk yeah. of playing time and can show he's his eye, the <laughs> ish of old. So um, I think he, he would help Roma, yeah, because there's a good player in there. Um, but it's not easy for Chelsea to shift these guys. No, definitely. Not. Until Bowley buys his ten clubs around Europe, and yeah, and Roma, the, including Roma, including including <laughs> Roma, possibly. Why not? <laughs> Anthony Gordon remains a figure of hate among many Everton fans, and he's linked with a move to Newcastle. Jules, do, do Newcastle need him? I I think they can do with a wide player, especially if Alan San Maximan uh, leaves the club. He hasn't played much, so you had Joel Joel Linton playing. Wide on the left, you had Joe Willock, for example, playing there with, well, with Amiron on the right. I think Gordon on the left-hand side, again, depending on how much you spend on him, he's a good young player. Not so much this season because he's hardly played. And, and when he did play, it was not very good. But I think he showed last season that there's potential there. Uh, but, I, you know, he, he sort I of go sacked back. off the last two training, training sessions. I don't like that kind of attitude. You know, he wants to move. He doesn't turn up for training. Not looking yeah, good. and by the way, all those Everton fans who got killed in the media for like giving him a hard time. I know this was before, but like, what, what I would do with this guy is obviously again make sure you get the price right. Yeah, but you have to be very confident because he's a young player. What he's been through psychologically, it's a trauma as a guy who you know came through the ranks at uh, at Everton, yeah. who's been playing yeah, for all yeah. this. You insert somebody who's been through that. Some people respond, oh, Newcastle's a new team, fans, great, great team, and slot in straight away. For others, it takes them a really, really long time. Yeah, so you true. really have to do your homework. I don't know what's right or wrong, but certainly that should be top of Newcastle's list if they're going to consider this. Yeah. Tottenham inch closer to securing Pedro Porro from Sporting. We've talked about this before. This is yeah. a good move, yes? Yeah, it's a good move. I mean, again, my dream, like for the uh, forwards, my dream is for Antonio Conte to play Doherty, Jed Spence, Emerson Royal and Pedro Porro all together. It's not going to happen, Spurs fan. Either. I was only joking. I mean, four right backs. Oh yeah, but you always you said there's no right backs around. You said earlier. There's no and Pedro Porro. He's a right wing back to start with, not right back. Uh, and and he's great, but his release clause is 45 million euros right now, and Spurs are trying to lower that down and get the deal done for 35. But my, so which is great. I think he's a very talented player. He would he would do well there. 
And but when are you moving the others out? Because what's the point of signing Porro and then having still the other three in your squad? Well, Do you I know think, what I mean? Like I you think, don't just. I think add Doherty's another... country contract is is winding down. I think he has eighteen months left. Yeah, um, but... So I don't think I don't think he's difficult to move. A lot of people like him. If that's the guy you want to lo- move. Emerson's going to be a little bit tougher unless you want to take a, a, a well, loss and Jet Spence goes on loan. You, yeah, but you, you spent 10 million on him last summer. And but remember what Conte said for? about Jet Spence? It's he was a club signing. Oh, yeah. oh my God. I'm but bad. I want to say this about Potter, right? Potter's 23, right? Yeah. He's got the Manchester City pedigree. He's played in the Champions League. Yeah, no, he's got great. He's got a long resume, right? Yeah. Um, and that's 35 million. Yeah. Malagusto, who's it's it's not like Malagusto's ten years old, right? He's four years younger, or even more so yeah. for Zneda, right? Who's he's just five yeah, years yeah. younger, right? We're talking about similar amounts of money or, or comparable amounts yeah. of money just That's about for true. people with with absolutely no resume relative to yeah. relative to Porto. Yeah, yeah. So it's no, 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 no. It, it's interesting. I mean it's interesting how how, how how football's changing that way. Yeah, that's true. Xavi has announced that Frank Kessier is staying at Barcelona this transfer window. Gab, do you believe him? But he, he's the boss, right? I mean, unless, unless you need to move him so that you can oh, you, you can give Gavi the number six shirt. That's true. Um, no, I think he should stay. I think it's especially if, if we see more of this 4-4-2 version, which I'm not sure we will because ultimately at some point somebody's got to ask, well, why did we pay for all these other freaking wind- wingers and Rafinha and Ferran yeah. Torres and, yeah. and, and, and Ansu Fati and whatever else, right? Um, so I'm not sure that <laughs> that's going to happen. But... Um, I think Cassie's an asset. If you, you saw do, that game like against Real Sociedad, those runs, remember De Jong had like two chances where like yeah. it was almost like he was like the adjunct center forward, he gets in the ball. Cassie can do that. He yeah. does it different. I'm not saying he's a natural De Jong substitute, he's a young alternative, yeah. right? He I can, he can do it. some of that. He yeah. can have some of those driving runs. He gives you different physicality. He gives you something different. So all the more so, I, I, I hope this debate ends that they keep him. The only reason you would sell him is like, oh, look, he came on a free. Yeah, so whatever exactly. we sell you know, is free it. money. Yeah. You know, it helps our books. But come on, man. Like, it's not fair to him and it's, it's not fair to Barcelona. No, we make them weaker. Fine. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.